Let's talk about the, the other Munster Senior Hurling Championship semi-final this weekend. St. Finn Bars against Ballier. I was looking at a piece in the Cork Echo and the headline is Bars could struggle with the experience and physicality in the Munster arena. You know, that is, that's a fair enough point. There certainly is something to that. Ballier have been down this road before. But when you think of how it went for them last year when they played Ballygunner in Cusick Park, they got, they got beaten up and down the pitch. And if you're not 100%, that can happen. It happened to Killer One. Ballier were without Tony Kelly last year. So I'm sure they'll be very, very interested in making sure that they atone for last year. Oh, they definitely will. Um, and when it comes to Munster experience, it's, you know, tipped obviously heavily in favour in favor of Ballier. They really ground out what was a really good Aero side, you'd have to say, in that county final. I think they hit, did they hit the last four, the last five points. Um, that was a big win for them. Uh, and even Gary Brennan will have another couple of weeks of hurling under his belt. I think this is going to be interesting, Shane, from um, from the point of view of a clash of styles and even how different championships are played. We've talked about before about maybe you know how open uh, the Cork Championship can be. The Clare Championship is not like that. It's real in your face, dogged stuff, and you know and Ballier are the perfect example of that. So I'd say there's probably a fair clash in style between Ballier and the Bars with. The big, physical, dogged style that Ballier have, obviously with plenty of class as well, and I'm not saying they don't have class, they have loads of that, with maybe uh, the Bards have been, you know, with the makeup of the Cork Championship and the way the club championship has been played in recent years there, you'd have to say it's a lot It's a lot less contact than in most other in most other counties. You, you couldn't compare it to Limerick, you couldn't compare it to Clare, you couldn't compare it to Kilkenny. So it's going to be interesting to see um, how the Bards, uh, whether they're able to take that in their stride, they obviously have won their first county title in a good while. They've, you know, adequate time to, um, you know, be over that now and be ready to kick on. And it is a glorious opportunity. They've avoided, you know, Ballier are a big hitter, but they've avoided the two biggest hitters in Munster. And there's a serious opportunity here for them. When push comes to shove, I, I, I'd be surprised if Ballier are beaten, being honest with you. Um, but it is a, a glorious opportunity for the Bars as well and to see whether they can, whether they can back up their Cork success and, maybe quieting the likes of me and a few others who would question, you know, the style maybe within Cork and whether it can transition into Munster when it's really put up to them, particularly physically. Yeah, well, they do have players that are able to mix it up. Like oh, yeah. the three, and certainly the two older Cahillans in Damien and Connor, they played, you know, big games against Cork and, or sorry, against Limerick for Cork. Then Jack Cahillan looks like he's going to be an excellent player. Like I interviewed Damien Cahillan here on the show couple of weeks ago you can type his name into the into the website there and you'll find that interview geez he was he was great to chat to. He's, he's obviously really looking forward to this match but Cork clubs in general I mean the last time a Cork club won it was Newtown Chandram in 2009 they beat Ballygunner that day at Semple Stadium but uh, I think in more recent times the only club in the last 13 years that has even got to a final was Glen Rovers and that was in 2016 uh, when they when it was uh, when they played against Ballier and they were eight, came up eight points short that day. So it is a big thing, I think, for a Cork team to make a bit of a burst in the in the Munster Championship. But like, if you look at Ballier and just the form that they've had in recent years, they've been very good at when they've come out of Clare. And the, like Michael mentioned, they had that late surge against Airog in the in the in the Clare final recently, two fourteen to one sixteen. So it was a very tight game, and they won by the minimum. But you have the likes of Niall DC there as well as obviously Tony Kelly. And you've a lot of players that we've talked about in the past that they've got a nucleus of football players, you know, county football players as well as past county football players that are able to physically mix it. And obviously they can hurl as well. I think when you mention someone's a footballer, it doesn't necessarily mean you're downplaying that their hurling ability. But they've also got Paul Flanagan. They've got Gerard O'Connell, I think Goodgy they call him. They have Jack Brown, who's played a lot at this level as well. Pierce Lillis, Gary Brennan. Like these are guys that are all able to physically mix it. And it's, it's hard to ignore the quality that they have and the experience they have at this level. You know, they've gotten to All-Ireland Finals. They've obviously won Munster titles. It all counts. Yeah, plus, Shane, at this time of the year, you're able to gobble up ground. You know, you're big, you know, you're able to, you're able to go through that kind of heavy ground maybe a lot easier maybe than smaller, maybe more diminutive kind of uh, skill players, shall we say. At this time of the year, uh, physicality does come into it. I know from playing football, as you do yourself as well, the benefits, if you're playing quite a bit of hurling, the benefits of playing football along with it as well. You're just able to take hits, you're able to give hits. You're, you want contact. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely plays to Ballier's strengths. 
Do you, like so one of the other things we've seen a lot this year is a team wins its first and you know we see this over the years that a team wins its first county title and then it struggles when it comes out into the provincial championship i mean shinron maybe is an example of that killer one but obviously their circumstances were different but having only you know six or seven days it is october the 16th since st finbar's beat black rock 214 to 17 in that county final so they you know first county title in 29 years none of these players have obviously ever won it before because you know they were only young lads or uh, a dirty look in their in their father's eye back when uh, when that last title was being won in 1993 but uh, like you would say they've had a bit of time to prepare for this i'd imagine with the culture of the club it's like we're the bars you know when we get out into the into the monster championship we're going to make an impact and i'm looking through the team and I'm thinking yeah they've got the the three Kyle Lance that i've mentioned but they've also got billy hennessy they've got ethan toomey who looks like a real up and coming player they've ben o'connor they have Brian Hayes, who's been, who was on the, the road with the Bears footballers last year when they got to an All-Ireland semi-final. They have Ben Cunningham. He's a very big physical player as well. So there's lots of reasons why they can look at this and think, Do you know what, we've got a lot of experience here. We've lads who've played in All-Ireland finals. We've got guys who've played in All-Ireland under-20 finals and minor finals and all that kind of stuff here. We're the Bears. Let's get stuck into these lads from Clare. They should definitely be embracing that chain anyway and bringing it with them, yeah, without a doubt, like... They have a serious heritage and history at Munster and All-Ireland level, obviously, as well as within Cork. I mean, you go down through the quality they have there. They have serious quality, serious physicality. Um, I'd still just, I still just I still just think Ballier have that nous and know-how in Munster. Uh, and, I, yeah, I just fancy Ballier to get through by three or four and kind of would grind you, them down the stretch, maybe. Would you agree that this game isn't, probably isn't get, is becoming a little bit of the forgotten game this week? I actually think this is going to be a very good game. It's going to be it's going to be a brilliant game, Shane. But it's just a matter of you know you have this big giant beside you, and this is the this is the other game, shall we say? Listen, my worry for Bally Gunner and the Piercing is I'm looking forward to it too much, and it's potentially I'm we're overhyping it. Maybe the first game you you know is going to be tight as well. Maybe that'll be the game of the weekend. But uh, it doesn't matter. The winner of the two semi-finals, they're both guaranteed. Uh, a monster final place. There's nothing, you know. There's nothing uh, extra on offer for the Napierstick Bally Gunner game. It's still a monster final place. And I tell you something: if Ballier played Bally Gunner again, they'd love a chance, a redemption after last year. If they played Napierstick again, they'd like they'd fancy their chances there. The bars, it's probably a bit of an a bit of an unknown. And I suppose that unknown maybe is what's helping me decide with with Ballier and probably obviously Tony Kelly in there as well. And as you say. Cottle O'Connor, Pierce Lillis, Gary Brennan, Niall DC, Jack Brown, Paul Flanagan. You know, there's some serious quality there. Um, so I just, just think Ballyale just about scraped through.